All right, Brenda, you said we're clear. We've got enough. Yeah, yeah, we're good. Okay, and re recording started already, it looks like. Yep. All right. Well, with that, welcome everyone. I'll call the meeting to order. Um, Brenda, would you take roll for us, please? Yes. Board member Bariski is absent. Board member Mercier, Mercier. Board member Ridley. Present. Board member Raw. Present. Board member Freeman is absent. Council member Anderson. Present. Council member Woodward. Present. Mayor Sierra. Present. Vice Chair Habernick. Present. And Chair Moore. Present. All right, good. Uh, next order of business, approval of the minutes from the May 9th meeting. Can I get a motion to approve? So moved. A motion to approve May 9th. All right. board. And I'll second any, there. Thank you. All right, any comments, corrections? All right, hearing none, all in favor, say aye. 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 Abstain. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, any objections? Um, right. You know, yep. uh, go back real quick. Um, Chuck, you abstained. I was not present. So can you make the second? I'm sorry. Jim made the second. Jim oh, made Jim the second. did. I'm sorry. My apologies. <laughs> I, I thought it was Chuck. Okay. Thank you. That's a good question. I think he could have though, but anyway, not relevant. <laughs> um, let, uh, okay, so uh, public forum, do we have, Brenda, do we have anyone from the public tonight? We do not. Okay, never understand why we don't draw a bigger crowd. Uh, <laughs> all right, I, item five, new business. Um, and I will turn it over to Sarah uh, to lead us on. All right, good evening, um, Water Sewer Board, Mr. Mayor. Um, tonight we have a decision item on the Santa Fe Park City Ditch Relocation and Land Dedication. Uh, so this item is a series of agreements to relocate City Ditch on a developer's property in the city of Littleton. Um, and there's several agreements in order to do this. One is um, a construction agreement um, and there's access easement agreements. And then there's also, um, this is also in the area of the McClellan pump station. Um, so there is a, an agreement for land dedication around our facility. Um, Stephanie Ellis is the project manager and been coordinating with the developer. She's on the call tonight, as well as a couple representatives from um, the developer who can answer questions at the end of the presentation. Okay, so for a little background, um, there's two developments that are currently in the final planning stages in the southwest corner of Mineral Avenue and Santa Fe Drive in the city of Littleton. These developments are planned for single family and multifamily purposes. Um, and shown on the map, um, there are the boundaries of the two developments. There's River Park, which is owned by the Evergreen Mineral and Santa Fe LLC. This is the smaller development here on the north. Um, and then to the south, which is the subject of consideration tonight, is the Santa Fe Park development, and that's owned by Toll Southwest LLC. Um, so Inglewood has critical raw water delivery infrastructure running through both of these developments. Um, this is shown in blue here. This is the existing city ditch open channel. So as you can see, it runs right through both of those properties. Um, and then the red on either side are sections of city ditch that are already piped um, kind of on the boundaries of, of these two developments. And then the green line is the proposed um, relocation and piping of city ditch in this area. So as you know, um, we are planning to pipe all the sections, the remaining open channel sections of city ditch. And so this would accommodate that goal as well as um, move the ditch outside of the development area for these two developers. Um, so moving on, so specifically with Santa Fe Park development, 
Um, so this is the area that is owned by Toll Southwest. Um, and it is slated for residential development. Um, there are proposed improvements related to City Ditch. So that is this green here. So relocating it out of this open channel that runs through um, this portion of the property. And then there's also land dedication around um, McClellan Pump Station, which is shown in the light blue here. And then later on this year, we will also be bringing back similar agreements that we're, we'll discuss tonight for the drain line relocation. So that's shown in this um, blue in the middle of the property. Um, and that is the drain line from McCullen Reservoir. Uh, so this figure shows the overall site plan for this development. Um, there's several colors going on here. So I'll, I'll walk through each of these as we talk about the agreements. Um, generally, the blue is new easement and the green color is existing easement that's to remain. Uh, the pink in here, this is along the drain line, um, that is existing easement that potentially will be abandoned with the, with the drain line agreements. And then it's probably really hard to see on the screen, but there is some red hatching along this part of the blue um, area that is the drain drain line easement. And that is also um, existing easement that's to be vacated um, in, down the road. Uh, so tonight we're looking at a few agreements related to city ditch. The first is the easement grant, and this gives the city access um, around the new city ditch alignment. So this is the blue area along here, um, as well as um, a drive driveway access along this part of the development to get to the McClellan pump station area, so shown in blue. Uh, the construction agreement um, gives the terms of the construction for the piping uh, reloc and re relocation of city ditch in this area here. Uh, the developer is funding all construction and related costs. Um, and so this fits with our plans again to pipe um, the open channel sections of city ditch between Chatfield and the Allen water treatment plant. Uh, the agreement assures that um, Inglewood will have uh, the ability to inspect and approve the improvements before we consider that the project is complete. And so the third agreement related to City Ditch is uh, this reciprocal agreement. This is the, um, between the two developers, so the developer to the north as well as Toll. Um, and it is to facilitate the connection between the two properties of City Ditch, so right here. So we, ne we needed this agreement to um, be put in place because Toll is slightly ahead of Evergreen, and so they will need to make some improvements on Evergreen's property. And it, when that happens, this gives them the um, ability to do that. And then when Evergreen ties in to that, um, new infrastructure in this corner. Um, it allows Evergreen to, if they have to make any improvements on Toll's property. And then at the end of that, when the construction is finished, it turns over that infrastructure to the city. The pump station agreement is a purchase and sale agreement. And that agreement um, dedicates additional land in this area to the city of Inglewood for our McClellan pump station. Um, this facility is potentially slated to be replaced with a larger facility. So Inglewood had one of our third party engineers provide their technical expertise um, during our negotiations with Toll to size the area so that it, we were um, guaranteed that it, it would fit the city's future needs. Uh, so this agreement requires the city to pay the developer $1 upon the land dedication. And then, like I mentioned, the um, agreements related to the drain line along here will come later this year. With that, I will open it up for questions. Anyone have any questions for Sarah? I saw a floating thumbs up, but I have no idea what that meant. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it uh, sounds like we do not have questions. So, well, the floating I, oh, the floating lines up. I think it or thumbs up is mine. I don't know okay. why it's floating. <laughs> but, um, 
My question is, on that drain line that comes later, will there be any expense to the city on that for purchase of that ground or getting that easement? No, so that would be similar in the um, construction agreement terms that we have for city ditch. It, it would be at the developer's cost to replace, the, to um, locate the drain line where we need it to be. Okay, great. That's all I have. Great. All right. No hands or floating thumbs. So uh, can I get a motion to recommend uh, the city council approved by ordinance items 5A1 uh, through 5A4 as written. So moved. Second. Wonderful. Any further discussion? All right. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion carries. Thank you. Um, all right, uh, that was it for that was it for five. Uh, moving on to informational item six, informational items. Um, Victor, I think you're up. Um, I think I'll start. Um, okay. With the water and sewer fund, and then I'll turn it over to Victor for the stormwater fund. Oh, I'm sorry, overlooked that. Uh, thank you, Sarah. I yeah, no, no problem. So um, tonight is our preliminary 2024 um, budget proposal. Um, and our, we will also present the five-year um, updates to the five-year capital plan uh, since we pre presented them to this board um, back in April. Um, so we'll review the each of the budget proposals for the water fund, the sewer fund, um, and the stormwater fund. And then this is the same presentation that will be given to um, Inglewood City Council at the June 26th study session. So here's our agenda and this agenda is the same for each of the funds. We'll give a quick department overview. Um, just run through the 2022 funds that re were returned to the fund balance. Um, and then go over the 2024 budget proposal and I can answer any questions um, at the end of each fund presentation. Um, so department overview, we provide water and sewer services to 34,000 residents and uh, 2,100 businesses, drinking water and wastewater collection. Um, here's a glimpse of our assets for water infrastructure. So the water treatment plant um, almost 200 miles of pipe um, in the distribution system, two high pressure pump stations, two booster stations, and three storage tanks. And our wastewater infrastructure is 82 miles of collection pipe with 1,600 manholes. Um, and then the majority of that collect wastewater collection is sent to South Platte Renew, where we um, are have a joint ownership of that facility with the city of Littleton, and that facility serves um, a population of 300,000. Our organizational structure, um, obviously the water sewer board, and then our director of utilities, who also serves as the EMRF board president. Um, and then we have three divisions, business solutions, operations and maintenance, and engineering. Um, there's um, 61 FTEs. Uh, and then I'll just note, there's a star at the bottom. We had three FTEs approved last year for monthly connector district billing. We have not started that service yet. So those FTEs are just being held um, in, until we do that, uh, likely in 2024. Um, so then there's just a breakdown of the various FTEs in each of the divisions and um, the 0.5 at business solutions and engineering. So that's split deputy director as I'm currently um, in the role for both of those divisions. Uh, for the water and sewer fund, we have a connection to the strategic plan and strategic outcomes. So really our main goal is to ensure the protection of the city's water and infrastructure and to deliver water that meets all state and federal regulations. Um, 
And then for governance, we just want to mention that we've developed long-term uh, financial plans that address the infrastructure needs of both the water and sewer system while maintaining affordable rates and fees. So moving on to the funds return to the fund balance. Um, Looking at this column um, in the middle here, one equals A minus B, this is, this is the difference between our budgeted amount in 2022 and what we spent. Um, and I'll just highlight a couple things. So the positive numbers um, indicate where we underspent on those budget line items. Um, so that first um, line is salary savings from our vacant positions, um, contractual or our professional services line item, was overspent in that particular line item. And that's due to um, our increased usage of our engineering on-call services and our water rights attorneys um, throughout the, the year in 2022. Um, and then the, the big return to the fund balance was our capital. We only spent about 20% of the capital that we had budgeted for in 2022. Um, and again, it just takes time to ramp up capital spending. Um, a lot of the capital that we are um, investing in this year and plan to continue into next year is in the de design phase and um, given staffing vacancies uh, in the engineering group that's limited our execution. So if you look at our 2024 budget request, here's a summary of the various uh, expense categories. Um, First two, personnel and commodities are really inflation related um, increases is what we're planning for uh, in 2024. Um, the contractual or professional services, that has a larger increase and that's due to um, increasing, we'd like to increase our use of on-call engineering um, firms to uh, help us ramp up capital spending as well as um, we see a need to increase the water rights engineers and water rights attorneys costs um, to accommodate some water court um, and water cases that we're seeing likely will um, occur in 2024. So those accommodates additional days that um, our attorneys may have to spend in water court. Um, we've also uh, increased capital quite a bit. This large increase, the 15 million, um, is capital projects that we have had planned, but then also um, adding in the lead service line replacement. So I'll go through um, those line items here in a minute. Um, but that's that large increase is that now we've added the lead service line replacement program as a capital um, expense for next year, starting next year. Uh, so these are slides that you saw back in April. Um, the red identifies what has changed. So there's quite a bit on this slide. Um, the things that we have changed is really the line number three where we crossed out the operations complex. So that was a larger facility that we were going to attempt to um, consolidate all of utility staff into one location at the service center. Um, that is dependent on um, you know, de redevelopment of the civic center uh, and funding in the other departments um, in the city for um, the broader facilities upgrade to the service center. And because that has been delayed and we're not sure you know, when that will move forward, we, we took a look at um, phasing in some improvements in our already existing facilities. So um, the Allen Water Treatment Space Improvements Phase 1, that's project number one, that was one that we um, previously brought to this board with a CMGC is very close to starting construction um, here later this year. That's to add uh, several offices at the wa Allen Water Treatment Plant for operators, um, or for, excuse me, for operating supervisors, um, as well as the deputy director of operations and maintenance. And then um, phase two of that is we have additional um, space where currently there's temporary trailers that we think we can fit a, a smaller building that would accommodate our engineering staff. Um, so we're, uh, that project would kick off next year in design and hopefully in construction towards the end of the year with the bulk of that construction being in 2025. And then we would do a similar project at the service center to house um, our 
distribution and collection staff, as well as our uh, field staff uh, and our meter staff. Um, so the, both of those projects we're assuming are about $2 million. So they're split between the water fund and the sewer fund. So that's why this doesn't quite add up to $2 million each, but that reduces this, um, this line item for the operations complex. Um, so, that, so the total space improvements we're assuming for the next two years would be around 6 million instead of the nine and a half. Uh, so then on this slide, just a couple updates. One is the Denver Water Emergency Interconnect. We are currently negotiating with Denver Water for this interconnect. They have tentatively approved two locations to connect to their system, which we would then be able to um, use if there was an emergency um, in our own system, we would be able to take water from um, Denver Water. So with that, we'll need to make some infrastructure improvements of vaults and some connections between their system and ours. And we're anticipating that would happen in 2024. Uh, so we added $3 million um, since April for that. Uh, and then to accommodate some of that um, increase in spending, we pushed out um, some pump station improvements. We are planning on doing um, the Clarkson and Hampton booster station improvements along with the old Hampton uh, Road uh, utilities project. So those are both in here, but then we decided to push out some pump station improvements that would be at like McClellan Reservoir or one of the other remote facilities. Um, and then this is the lead service line program. Uh, we initially came to the board with um, a six year accelerated replacement. We've decided to push that out to a 10 year program, um, mostly because of the funding as we are putting this into our financial models, um, we're seeing that it's likely needs to be a 10 year program. Um, just based on when funding might be available and when we can um, increase fees and rates in order to accommodate the additional capital that we are investing in in the system. Um, so now moving to some operations um, expenses. This is a summary of what we're, um, our enhancement requests. So we have four. Um, for the water fund, and I'll, I have a um, slide for each one of these, uh, but in total we're requesting about 896000 um, in enhancements, um, and we've really refined the O&M budget um, this year with the new supervisors that are on staff. So there's been a lot of movement between the line items, so it isn't an increase of you know, almost $900,000. These are just specific line items we wanted to sell. Uh, so the first is the building rental. Um, and so we are going to add a fourth temporary office trailer. Um, Public Works has an office trailer that they no longer need at the service center. So we are going to take over that lease from them because we have um, quite a few uh, distribution and collection staff um, located in our one temporary trailer that is out at the service center. So this would allow us to um, make sure that everybody has enough space to do work out there. And that's a ongoing amount of $28,000. Once that space improvement project is done at the service center, we would then um, no longer need the trailer. Uh, the second enhancement, this combines the, um, the second two, the, the two, second and third items on that summary sheet. Um, we are requesting a half of an FTE as a network engineer that we would split with the IT department um, to accommodate our um, other enhancement request, which is software and hardware, hardware um, maintenance, uh, we are, need to implement cybersecurity best practices for the water treatment plant to reduce any risk of cybersecurity threats. Uh, the EPA is uh, has additional requirements that they are putting on water and wastewater providers to ensure that we are protecting ourselves from any cybersecurity threats. So we're estimating that that's you know, a one-time implementation next year of 300,000. And then we would have, um, you know, half a FTE dedicated to the utilities um, technology. 
And then our third enhancement is professional services. So as I mentioned before, we'd like to increase our use of on-call professional engineers. Um, and so that's the hundred thousand, that's a hundred thousand we're anticipating um, that would move forward, but we continue to, to use that amount as well as increase the water resources engineering um, uh, professional services to account for um, you know, protection of our water rights and make sure that we're using those efficiently. So those are the two ongoing. Um, the one-time increase of 300,000 is for our water rights attorneys, and that's due to those anticipated days in water court next year. So this next sheet is a summary of the inflationary impacts that we're seeing on um, specific line items in the water fund. Um, I'll highlight the three that are the, the um, largest like percent increase. So that's the postage and mail services. Um, that is anticipated to increase by about 45%. And that's due to materials and labor as well as an anticipated increase in um, postage. Uh, the next one that is fairly significant is the lab chemicals and supplies. That's an increase of 38%, and that's an increase in costs of chemicals as well as those supplies and services in, um, included in that line item. So that's testing for water quality, and, um, and we can test some things in-house at, at our lab um, that's located at the water, Allen Water Treatment Plant. Um, the RNM supplies and equipment is a 39% increase. And again, that's due to anticipated cost increases uh, with supplies and services. Um, the remaining items have um, inflationary increases in the 10 to 20% range. And finally, for the water fund, this is our 2024 revenue proposal. Uh, so consistent with our financial modeling that was started in 2020 and is continually updated, um, we are requesting a 4.5% increase to the water rates. So it'd be 4.5% above the 2023 rates. And this should result, we're anticipated that this will result in additional revenue of about 275,000. Uh, the water connection fees are increased based on the five-year average of the engineering news record construction cost index. So that five-year average is 3.93% um, using uh, the past five years. So that means that the water connection fee, which is currently $20,122, would increase to $20,913 per single family equivalent. So as the meter size increases, this um, cost to purchase a water connection um, to our system would also increase. And then the capital investment fee is planned to increase every other year. So this is not a year that, um, that we would see an increase. And I will note that this revenue proposal does not address the reven um, revenue required to fund the lead service line program. We are working with the state to really understand the funds available through the state revolving fund. A portion of that um, will be principal forgiveness from the infrastructure bill. Um, however, we will have to take on additional debt to fund that program. So we're working on the impacts that um, we would see to rates and fees to fund that program that would likely be implemented um, or request to be implemented in 2025. So I can keep going or I can stop here for questions on the water fund. Let's pause for questions, see if anyone has any on this part? Not seeing any at the moment, so I think we're okay to move on. Okay. Pull this back up. Okay, so moving on to the sewer fund. So same agenda. I'll just, these were the same slides, so I'll skip through these. Go to the 2022 funds return to the fund balance for the sewer fund. Uh, so again, there was some salary savings from vacant positions. Um, we did overspend on the commodities and that was an inflationary increase on, on those items. Um, 
we are heavily impacted on the sewer fund with what SPR spends as part of their budget. So they underspent um, in capital by um, uh, about 8% and then, or excuse me, um, on the um, operation side about 8% and then on the capital side, SPR spent 86%. So that's the difference between uh, those two line items. Um, and I'll just note on the debt service, it looks like we might have paid off a, a debt or some a debt obligation. But it, I, from what I can tell, I think this five million um, that was put in the budget for 2022 was um, incorrect, and it really should have been four million. We we have not paid off um, a debt obligation in the sewer fund. We are close. I think we have two years left on that current ob obligation. For 2024 budget proposal, um, we again are looking at inflationary increases for the personnel and commodities. Um, also as well, it looks like inflationary for professional services. Again, that's dependent on SPR's budget. They, they provide us those line items um, as they are developing their budget. So you'll see the capital increased by 4.4%. Um, that is SPR's um, capital that they are projecting for 2024. Um, and then again, as, as I mentioned, the debt service um, is going down, but uh, that's just due to an error that was uh, in the 2023 budget. So here are the same um, changes that you saw on the water fund. These are the space improvements. This is just the sewer side of, of those projects. So adding um, space improvements at the Allen Water Treatment Plant, we'd split that between um, water and sewer because engineers do work on both. And then the same at the service center, um, we have distribution and collections. So they would also have, there would also be a share of those costs uh, assigned to the sewer fund. We um, we decided to combine the sewer pipe rehab and the manhole rehab line into one. Those are really the same project. We don't need to call them out separately. So they'll be combined moving forward. And then we have one um, enhancement request in the sewer fund. Uh, and that is again, the, um, Oh, I skipped a slide here. Okay, so that is uh, 69,000, um, a one-time amount. Uh, this is what we think it will take to uh, make the changes in the utility billing software to move to uh, monthly billing for um, the connector districts. So that would be assigned to the connector districts in their fee that they pay um, the city of Inglewood for billing um, those accounts. And then inflationary impacts, it's uh, similar uh, to the water fund. We would see an increase in postage and mail services. Um, so that is the only one we've listed here. Uh, again, since so much of our sewer fund um, budget is, it, we rely on SPR, uh, they would have the individual line items for um, their increases. Our 2024 revenue proposal for the sewer fund, uh, similar to the water fund, we're proposing a four and a half percent increase to increase uh, that would generate additional revenue of 933,000 next year. Um, we've listed out the rates here um, because there are several different rates because there's outside um, city treatment, inside city treatment, and then inside city treatment plus collection. So you can see that those rates vary depending on what the customer type is. Uh, so this is accounting for the four and a half percent increase for each of those rates. And then the sewer connection fee will also increase at the 3.93%. Um, so we'll move from $2,500 per SFE to $2,612 per SFE for any sewer connection. With that, I will stop for questions. Uh, um... All right, I'm off mute. Uh, Mayor Sierra. Thank you, Chair Moore. 
So Sarah, um, so is the postage mailing just like the, the billing that we're doing quarter, monthly, quarterly, whatever it happens to be? That's correct, yep. So um, we brought the InfoSend um, contract to um, this board last month and then to council after that. So that is the, um, the mailing, just the printing and mailing um, of our bills to our customers. I'm just trying to figure out if there's a way for us to automate this, either through a portal or, you know, if we have people's email addresses, just sending them to be an email in order for them to pay so we can look at that aspect in future years. But Yeah, um, great point. And actually, we, we will have that functionality. That'll be a better functionality once the um, utility billing um, program is live. We're getting very close um, to our... Um, like our mock go live testing to know better when that system will go live. And that um, e-billing is much more, um, uh, the functionality of the new system is so much better for e-billing that um, customers can go in, um, sign up for the e-bill, and then they can get it that way. And that will reduce our costs. So we are ready to track that. And I will just note that um, the city of Thornton actually went to paperless billing in 2023. Um, so that's the first that I've heard of this, of, you know, an entire city going to paperless billing, but um, it is an option um, moving forward. I'm not sure, we're not ready for that at the moment, but um, it's something to, to think about in future years. No, I appreciate that, Sarah. Yeah, let's stand up the system first, and then we'll worry about the uh, exactly. enhancements afterwards. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Jim? Yeah, I have a question on the revenue side underwater. W with the last month and a half, all the rain that we've had, I assume that's going to really cut into the water usage for landscaping and stuff, which would cut into the budget, I would think. So I I'm am, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I, I would say I agree with you. Um, so as the month of um, May closes, um, I am gonna take a look at that so I can understand um, what that looks like. And then we'll need June to really compare to what June looked like you know, in previous years. But I agree, I'm sure that there will be um, a decrease in the revenue that we'd expect. Yeah, okay, thank you. Any, any further questions? Uh, not seeing any. All right, we can keep going. Okay, so I will share my screen and then I will turn it over to Victor and Tim for um, the sewer or the stormwater. Yeah, thank you, Sarah. Good afternoon, everybody. I uh, appreciate your time today. So uh, a lot of the same stuff you've already seen uh, from uh, the standpoint of the agenda here in uh, uh, Councilmember Ward, I see your hand is up. Did you have a question already? Oh, it's gone. All right, so um, what we're gonna cover this afternoon for stormwater, uh, quick department overview, uh, 2022 funds returned and fund balance, and then our 2024 uh, budget proposal. Uh, next slide, please. So Public Works, our, our mission here is to promote and ensure high quality of life, economic vitality, and uh, that uniquely desirable community through delivery of quality projects, programs, and services, and in this case, specific to stormwater. Uh, our stormwater division, um, technically out of the fund, is 7.25 positions. 100% uh, positions within the stormwater group are our stormwater program manager, uh, compliance specialist, and two maintenance techs. Uh, of those four positions, three are filled, uh, we currently have one vacant uh, maintenance tech. We'll talk a little bit about that under funds returned. Uh, the good news is we actually have an offer out on the table uh, as of today. Uh, so fingers crossed we're able to fill that and get another maintenance tech on board. So the program areas for, for stormwater, we've got uh, system maintenance and repair, planning and prioritization, capital project implementation and program funding. Uh, inside of this, uh, is our MS4, the Municipal uh, Separate Stormwater Compliance Program uh, that is run by 
public works stormwater in compliance with state requirements. So the connection to the strategic plan for stormwater is primarily under the second bullet there, the infrastructure and transportation, um, and kind of that last line, looking to uh, have projects that reduce the risk of flooding in the city, and then also a little bit under sustainability, providing that infrastructure and design uh, that may, is maintained and provides that economic and equitable uh, ecological manner throughout the city. So funds uh, return to the fund balance. Um, I think this is consistent in all the presentations you've seen this afternoon. Uh, for personnel, we've had quite a few vacancies. Um, so we saw those uh, returned. Uh, commodities, uh, that kind of ties in a little bit uh, on the stormwater side to having less staff and, and the need for some of those commodities. Um, on the contractual or professional services side, we did utilize a large chunk of that. Uh, with the designs for capital projects uh, that are ongoing and in process. Uh, under the capital line item, you'll see that there's a large amount being returned to the fund balance. That's primarily the South Inglewood uh, outfall project. We did apply for two FEMA grants uh, in hopes to leverage uh, those dollars. Unfortunately, we received word uh, earlier this year that we were unsuccessful in that pursuit. Um, and so those funds were returned to the fund balance, um, and we'll talk about activating those for 23 here in just a minute. Um, and then we have the debt service, uh, which is part of that capital budget. That's actually a loan. So all in all, a little over 13.7 returned to the fund balance for 2022. All right, in our 2024 budget proposal, um, our salary and benefits, um, you know, just keeping pace with inflation there. Uh, as I just mentioned, we are almost fully staffed uh, on that team now, which is exciting. Uh, we're uh, hopeful to get this last person on board here shortly. Uh, commodities, uh, you'll see a very large increase there, and we'll talk about that under our enhancement, um, which is a few slides down. Uh, that's roughly a $300,000 increase, which is the reason for that bump in this slide. Uh, contractual professional services, uh, we are wrapping up um, the design and approval for the South Inglewood Stormwater Basin, which was a large chunk of that. Um, that's why that is down. Uh, capital, we're going into construction for the South Inglewood Stormwater Basin. Uh, final plans are in being reviewed, so we're hoping that project will hit the street here shortly, and then we'll have some other small projects uh, lined up as well. In addition to, in coordination with utilities, um, the Hamden uh, project, stormwater uh, in prep for the complete streets uh, coming down the pipe. And then of course our, our debt service on the loan. So this is similar to the last numbers you guys saw um, on, on projects for 2024 out to 2028. Uh, we got our clean and televised, it's our SAM project surveying and mapping. Uh, we're wrapping up the north side of Hamden this year, hope to get into the south side of Hamden um, in 2024. We got the old Hamden project, which is the one I just mentioned, the coordination with utilities there, uh, with to prep for the complete streets project that will be coming later. Uh, we've got re uh, repair and rehabilitate existing stormwater, which is an ongoing uh, process and challenge within the city. And then uh, the South Inglewood drainage plan, which is a 50-50 match a mile high so we're able to leverage some outside funding sources and then the big ticket item there is number five is the south inglewood storm that i mentioned those plans again wrapping up and hopefully getting out to bid here in short order um, and then tier two shown on here we have dry gulch master plan and then some small area drainage improvements all right so the summary uh for the enhancement request this is that uh, three hundred thousand dollar uh, jump that I mentioned in 2024, uh, we are looking to try and replace our back truck, uh, which is what we use to clean storm uh, inlets, grates, and then even some of the pipes. Our current back truck uh, was actually due to retire in 2019. Uh, we have been limping it along. It is currently out of service uh, with a uh, part that we have to get from the manufacturer. Um, that's gonna be well above beyond the value of the truck. Uh, we're trying to find other mechanisms and we're again, coordinating with utilities. They're kind enough to 
lend us a truck every now and then when they're not having it in use. So this is a critical piece of equipment for our stormwater team to make sure our system is up and running. Um, we're kind of limping along, but unfortunately we are, we are due for uh, a new piece of equipment here. And this would be rolled into SURF once it is purchased and we would um, send our existing unit to auction. As far as uh, revenue proposals for stormwater fees, uh, we are proposing a 7.2% increase, roughly $1.38. Um, and this is based on the engineering records construction cost index for Metro Denver. Uh, and this is just to keep you know, pace with inflation and construction costs as we continue to do capital projects and other things. Uh, this helps replenish those funds and keep us on track so we can get projects done within the city, uh, hopefully on budget with the current uh, inflation rates that we're seeing in construction. And with that, I'll happy to answer any questions. Any questions? All right, I'm not seeing any. Thank you. And, well, all right, thank you both. I don't, uh, again, no no action needed, right? It's just informational. Correct. That's correct, yep. Okay, all right. Uh, we have no old business. Um, Sarah, is there anything under staff's choice you'd like to discuss? We do not have anything tonight. Okay, wonderful. And uh, board members, is there anything anyone would like to raise? And seeing none, um, I believe adjournment is fast approaching. Uh, thank you all for your time tonight and we are adjourned. Thank, thank you, you everyone. Bye. Thank, thank you everybody.